it's a very sunny, and I do mean very hot and sunny, Saturday afternoon, and I find myself on the platform of Denton Station in Greater Manchester with Mark Overton. Mark, I've never met you before. Hello. 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 You look sort of like you look on your online picture. Oh, I think that's just plastic online. Uh, it's nice to meet you. Uh, we're here for what I'm still amusingly calling a choo-choo chat. We've chosen a location in Manchester where no choo-choos are set to run, apart from in about 15 minutes a freight train might run through in that direction. But otherwise, I'm here to talk to, well, I know you as an author. You've brought a pile of books. You do books about metro maps and the tube, but I've since found out that you've done a book about the Manchester Metro. And we're here to talk to you about your books. And also you have wider views on transport and transport policy. Is that correct? I think <laughs> probably a bit like you, I've been obsessed with transport since I was a young lad. Then straight away, I'm gonna to have to ask, why, why have you been obsessed with transport from an early age? What is it? I've been asked this once or twice actually, and I think it's partly because of my dad. My dad used to take me out when I was this high to shut me up and get me away from the TV along old disused railway tracks. Where was that? Where did you, where did you live when you were yay high? Well, I was in West London, in Hayes and Middlesex, and we had family all over the country, and we used to drive out to places and go along old canals or old railways. Remember, this is the 1960s, so we just had the beaching cuts, and there were loads of abandoned railways So there. the railways had all shut down, but all the tracks were, were still there? Pretty much, okay, yeah. Right. I can really remember one down in um, Hailsham in Kent, okay. where my lovely old auntie used to live, and it, she lived right next door to what was the station. And there it all was, you know, the station was all laid out, all the track was all there, and then we were like six, seven years old, running around all these train tracks, climbing in and out, old station buildings and that kind of thing. And those kind of things imprint on your memory, I think. That's probably why I'm partly obsessed by transport. You're not quite old enough to remember steam, or do you have very fleeting memory? What, what year were you born? You 63, so, so you not don't quite, really no, remember. no. But the last steam ran on the underground in, oh no, 661, 60, 60, yeah, 60. Yeah, just a little bit before me. There's probably still some smuts in my genetic gene pool somewhere. So that was out west, in West yeah, London. Yeah. And then where else have you moved around? Where, where else did you have te boy, uh, teenage boyhood Bro memories brought of up, Brought up mainly in London, but also uh, perversely, my mum and dad escaped London in the 1970s and went to live on the Isle of Wight. I've never been there. You've got to go and check that one out. <laughs> you will love that. That's one of the only places they run on tube trains. Are you aware of the, of the in-joke I have? I have been to the other white. Go on. It, there, there's an in-joke where I talk about having never been to the other white, but I have been to the other white. I have okay. ridden. That, so that was before the, even the 19... What was before the 1938 tube stop in the other white? I don't know, actually. The old ex-Waterloo and City Line. Probably some stop. really, really... Yes, I think you're right, actually. I think it was Waterloo and City Line, old okay. stock. Yeah, okay. yeah. But it's incongruous to see it running up and down on this very quite rural line, as you know, because you have been there, even though you lied to me just now. Uh, it's incongruous to see it there, this lovely urban underground stock running up and down the Isle of Wight Railway. What was your local station? Was it Sandown or Shanklin? Well, I wasn't or? particularly close to any of them because oh, I was okay. living in Cows. But yeah, we used to go and go, go and run up and down it from Ride Pier. Well, when you were yeah. like a teenager, 14 year old, was, like, yeah. was it Saturday? Yeah. You were like, okay, let's Jump go, on a bus okay. and go down to the railway was and have the, a look at it. Was the steam heritage line there then? Uh, uh, yes, a bit of it was, but it was only a very small bit when I was first there, but it's extended to Small Book Junction now, yeah. which is fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's just bring in your book straight away. Can I delve into your pile? Yes. Which, which, is, which is down here. This the is the first the, one. The, reason that, the, reason that, the whole reason that I know you, this is, this is a blatant plug. <laughs> 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 About 10 years ago, um, before I was with Vicky actually, uh, a lady in my life at PV. the time. PV. PV. Like, yeah, okay, I like that. <laughs> bought me but it wasn't called this back then it was called Metro Maps of yes. the World it had like a dark blue yes that was the UK it? version the UK version the, the international version is Transit Map of the World and could you explain what, what this you should all buy this book there's a link in the, this is your best selling book it is. What, what is in this book? What is in this amazing book? Well, this is a compendium of all of the transit maps or metro system maps or light rail maps from around the world brought together in one place. And the reason I did it is because I used to collect them. And I had a nice big stack of Barcelona or Moscow or Paris metro systems. And people used to say to me, oh, Mark, Mark, I'm going to Madrid. You've got a map of the Madrid metro, haven't you? This is pre-internet, of course. And I'm like, yeah, OK, well, this is my pride and joy. Please don't take it away from me. Surely there must be a book of all these things in one place and there wasn't. And there wasn't. So I thought, well, I'll have a go and do it one. Was this, was this before, was this, was this your first ever book? Yeah, what, that what, was... What, what, what did you do before two, you were an author? 2002, 2003, I started doing that. And I'm, I've been working in TV and radio and stuff most of my life. So you didn't work in transport no. or in railways? No. Okay. okay. 
okay. complete anorak. <laughs> but I've been collecting these things, and the, the book didn't exist, so I thought I'll try and do it. And it turned into um, you know a full time career, really. So at home right now, you've got a collection of metro maps from around the world. Yeah. And every time you go travelling, you're like, right, I'll take one of those because I quite obviously have a big tube map collection. You're saying you've got collections from name name some countries. Uh, oh, I don't know. I've, I've got quite a lot of them, really. Um, this nev- this never is your chance to, to name drop co- well, countries. Well, I've never tell you what. Been. I've never been to. I'd love to go to Pyongyang Metro. Because okay. apparently it's really palatial, a bit yeah. like some of the Moscow systems and whatever the Russian ones. But I just want to share that is in North Korea, right? Yes, it That's is in North famous. Korea. Okay. <laughs> I don't really want to go to North Korea. No, I but I'd love no. to see the metro. I, w- I wouldn't. If someone said to me, "Here's a free trip to North Korea, you know, you can ride on the subway, make a video about it, Jeff," I would have Off reservations. Off you go. No, I, I don't think I'd want to oh, go. Oh, really? Okay. What you hear? Yeah, yeah. Stories of they get very protective over their, you know, what journalists can and can't publish. I wouldn't want to go on a free trip to North Korea. Would you? Yeah. Would you go to Korea? Well, probably not actually, but I would love to get the Metro map. Yes. So if someone out there is watching it and has who, a copy. Who'd like to send Mark a copy of the Metro map? But is that what people did? Did they? Did you have people from around the world send you in Metro maps? Did you yeah, put like a, like a cryout? Yeah, partially, tryout, but also we also had to write to all the uh, all the organisations to get permission to use their map because obviously if you're going to put the map of the Berlin metro in you need the position of the, p- p- the permission sorry of the MVG who, so we're to write to them all who said no? in the lang- local language in the lo- how did you translate that well um, with the help of Chinese and Indian restaurants around the corner from where I lived, for example. I literally went in with no, a letter in English. No, you're winding me up. No, it's absolutely true. No, you're joking. I went in and I, I didn't know anyone who spoke Hindi, so I went into my local local restaurants this, from around this, the world. Was this in the days before Google Translate? Yeah, we're, we're talking about 2002, really. So, before so there Google wasn't Translate, really was Google thing. Translate. And I wanted to write to them in a local language, Japanese or whatever, and I literally asked friends or fr- people in restaurants to translate my letter, please come and use your map in a book. So this book is, a, is a, correct me if I'm wrong, a complete collection of every metro map from around the world? Yeah, I mean... There's how, many, that, how many metro systems are well, there? Well, that, I mean, that, that's, that's tricky. Then there's you get the, into how do you define a metro system, exactly. right? In a minute, I'll exactly. ask you whether you think Crossrail is a metro system or not. Okay, well, Let's wait just, until you get that question there. Let's do that <laughs> we'll now. Do it now. Okay. Well, no, because I did a brilliant interview last week <laughs> with a construction engineer at Tottenham Court Road, and, and, and uh, Emily there, she's brilliant. She was so enthusiastic and engaged about her railway. She went, it's because I believe that Crossrail, Elizabeth Line, Purple Line, isn't part of the underground. She said it's intercity sized trains in a metro system. And that's what it is. It's part of TFL. TFL are obviously controlling it, you'll, you'll pay with oyster fares, but it is what I call, you know, big boy trains. So it's, it's mainline trains that happen to go underground and are now on the tube map, but it's not the tube. Would you concur? I do concur, <laughs> except that I would add that we live in a fantastically diverse world and everything is becoming more and more hybrid. So you've got a system like, effectively, a, a, a mainline railway running underneath the city in the centre and on the surface at the edges. So it's a bit of both in a way, isn't it, really? It's not a tube railway, of course, but equally, it's not quite a normal standard mainline railway because it runs in such a long tunnel. And that's happening all over the world. I sort of get a sense. I'm, so I'm going to ask a question. I feel like I should just sit back and let you rant for five minutes. Are you? Are you unhappy with the state of transport in Britain? I am really unhappy about the state of transport in Britain. I think that planners and politicians over the years have really done us an injustice by allowing things like this to happen. And you can see it all over every conurbation or every part of Britain apart from London. London has really pretty darn good transport and that's brilliant and so it should do but the rest of the country needs good transport as well and one of my big bugbears here for example and it's the same in West Yorkshire and all around the place is ticketing. You have to really think about your day's journey and activity. You have to plan your whole day before you can leave the house to decide which company's bus am I going on, where am I going to, what time of the day is it, can I get back on the same bus, is there a bus back to it, am I going to take the train or add a tram to it, am I going to maybe get a lift home from someone, and that, that, that judges whether you get a pass for a day or not, and then you might buy a day pass and not use it, so you've lost money, you, the capped scheme doesn't work outside London, it's just such a difficult thing to get right. So is it because London has TfL and joined up buses, trains, trams, tube, and the Oyster card, is that what makes it a winner? Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. And that could easily happen here. When, when you're here, you're in Manchester, because yeah. you, 
you were born in Hackney, yeah. but you've also lived in Paris, yeah. so you have experience with the Metro, yeah. and now you've moved to Manchester. Yeah. Why, why Manchester, by the way? Um, partly because I did a book about the Metrolink, and, and which, which partly because I've got friends here, <laughs> and partly because... Um, this is Mark's book about the, about the, the Manchester Metrolink. <laughs> go to any city, there's a book about it. <laughs> uh, and that's why I go to places, really, because I'm fascinated by the transport and, or the, the people there or whatever. And I also lived here as well in the 1990s during the happy, dancey time as well. I've run a radio station here. so. I've done all sorts of different things in different parts of my life and it, it kind of felt like a natural circle to come back here for a while, yeah. So you think Manchester should have what? A transport from Manchester and one card that works on everything? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that should be the same wherever you live in Britain. You should be able to go out of your house and get on any mode that's there nearby and not have to think about whether you're going to come back on that particular service or not. Let, let me throw a complete curveball into the mix and by all means you can laugh at this is it is it too far stretch of the imagination to go well, why just contain that to cities why isn't there one card what seriously absolutely. one card for the entire country absolutely right the dutch do it whether you live in penzance or wick <laughs> absolutely or lowestoft or i'm trying to think of the most westernmost stations in scotland i think it's called ardlui could you genuinely have one card, no matter what train, bus, tram, metro you go on? Ferry, absolutely. It, it knows where you are. Yeah, and it, and it, of course oh, you can. Is that ever going to happen? Uh, yeah, of course it will, yeah. In our lifetime? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's just very, very slow. I mean, it's supposed to have happened already. The, the trains should have already happened, uh, but it got delayed and it's, it's not there yet. The readers are there on a lot of stations all around the country. It's going to happen. Because well, I live in South, I'm sort of Southern, Southeastern, and it, it amazes me when I see them bring in their own, like Southeastern brought in their, their key card system. But it's a completely different system to what Southwest or Southern trains have. It's like, why didn't you guys jump straight to contactless? Yeah. What, talk to each other and have the same system? Why yeah. do you have separate systems? Yeah. All you need is to, all you need is a reader. That's all you need. You just need to touch in with any card contactless or an Apple Pay device or any kind of mobile phone or a smart device, touch in and touch out the other end and it should be able to work out the best price for you. And how would it know? So it would, it would know by the time you, you touched in whether to charge you like a, a, a peak fare or, or an off-peak fare, how would it know if you were sitting in first class or not as to whether you were sat, charge you a standard class or first that's class? That's a good question. Should we even have first class anymore? Well, that's another good question. <laughs> You're full of them, aren't you? I love them. Because <laughs> you should have your own YouTube channel. <laughs> What, where I chat to people that have a love and passion and interest in transport. Oh, that, that's a great idea. That Give it a go. On these Give it a go. So, so what, should we have first class? Um, I, I don't necessarily ever use it myself. I suppose there, there may be a need for it. I'd be happy to watch a debate about it. I don't have enough information about it to have, make a judgment, really. Probably not, really. Why can't it all be first class? It's a long pause. <laughs> <laughs> For those listening to the audio, not watching the video, we both we just dramatically just sat there and went, oh, "Good idea." Should we just do away? With I'll tell you something that's really interesting about living here in Manchester, though. Yeah. I have never seen in my life so many private vehicles, and so many people think that everybody else has got a private vehicle and the reason for that is because public transport has been so terrible for so long that people have just thought oh, i can't cope with this there's too many buses too many interchanges the fridge services don't turn up the trains have been shut down i'm going to get a car and i don't blame them to an extent but what i would really love to see come the revolution more car sharing it, well is more car sharing is right. more encouragement not to use cars is much better use of the infrastructure we have the infrastructure here just over there, we've got a massive, great big tunnel through the Pennines, the Woodhead Tunnel, that isn't used for trains. Where I live in South East London, my neighbours that we're friendly with and chat to have a car, and they're very kind, and they go, oh, if you ever want to do a big shop or take something down the, the tip, here's our keys. Sweet. Borrow our car. And we've done it a couple of times. But then I think, why isn't that more of, of a thing? Why don't, if you, why don't people actually just share a car? If everybody that had a car agreed to share a car with their neighbour, you wouldn't need so many cars. You could instantly halve the number of cars that we have. Well, I wonder who's like against that idea. The government? The oil companies, the yeah. car companies, the insurance <laughs> companies. The, you know, these people have made a fortune by siphoning profits from everyone who used to have decent public transport. That's the real shame of it all. You know, we used to have trams running across that bridge. You, you wouldn't have believed the tram service that used to be here in Greater Manchester. It was phenomenal. It, Almost every other road had a tram running up and down it. It was incredible. So and that's why we built this city this size. So it had trams like London did back in the 50s ah, and 60s. Of course it did. And yeah, then they yeah, went yeah. away. Yeah, absolutely. And then it all became the car. Yeah, the buses. At, yeah, yeah. And, and, now, and then the trains have been there. And now they've slowly brought the trams. Yeah, yeah. 
back in. It's just ridiculous. I mean, if you want to make it international, look at LA. The reason why LA is the LA, shape of LA, LA is, terrible. is because it was built for streetcars. It was built for trams. It went long and thin and wide and, and, and low density population because there were thousands of tram lines in LA. And they were all shut down. You know, the Who Framed Roger Rabbit is not a, a fantasy film. It's a true story. What? The, is he, is the, he, is he re- the cartoon is real? The cartoon is absolutely real. Is that the car companies forced the tram lines to shut. And so then everyone had to buy a car. And it's the same when you walk around any conurbation in Britain. We built these cities, I feel a song coming on, for trams <laughs> and public transport. And when that was all run down, people were forced to turn to cars. And now people say, well, there's not enough passengers for the buses or the trams, so there's no point reopening them. No point opening stations like this again, because everyone's got a car. Well, the reason people have got cars is because everyone run the public transport down. How often do you go on train journeys? Do you still get excited when you buy a ticket? Of course, yeah. I, I, I love I'm going to go one this afternoon to lovely Northwich in Cheshire, and I should be very excited because I've never been on that bit of the have line bought, before. Have you bought an advance ticket? I've bought a thing called a Wayfarer, Gosh. which allows me to go on any bus, tram, or train. But it was thir- nearly 14 quid. But you bought it in advance. But I bought it in advance. The fun bit, though, is always planning your day. There's always, there's always a point where you think, oh, I fancy a trip to so and so. And then you get home, and you get out, and you get online, and you get the timetables up, and you get the map out. And that's always the fun bit, isn't it, where you sort of plot where you Oh, can I go here and go there? That's, that's you find it fun, and I would, I would too. I would too. Uh, but I, what I I'm see, trying to I get see, at is that, is that you know the majority of the population should be able to do exactly what you said just now. Should be able to just turn up and go, touch some kind of card in, touch it out the other day, and and know they're going to get charged the least amount for the journey that they've done. And that's what we need to get to. And it's coming with Transport for the North and other organisations around the country that are trying to do these things. But it's just too slow for me, really. Do you think that's maybe how it'll happen? Maybe if there's a Transport for Edinburgh, for sure I know. Do you think in Manchester, if there was, if there was a... Well, there was, what's the there's, old, there is TFGM. There is TFGM. Yeah, 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 yeah. What if... What if Here's a radical idea. What if, like, TFGM sort of adopted Oyster? Yeah, what, what they're if trying all, to. What if all the cities actually had the same... So your Oyster card in London yeah. worked in yeah, Manchester, to, yeah, yeah. worked in Edinburgh, no, and then that. once... They are, that, yeah, yeah. that is... Yeah, someone's planning idea. that. That's the idea. Great. It's that, just coming so, so slowly. But why is it so slow? Because... Oh, you asked, you tell me. Because I know you as Metro Maps man, do you, do, you, do you have a love more for the little metro system? Mm. Yeah, is no, that, I love them. I do that, love them, yeah. You prefer... A journey on the tube than a journey on on the, on the, on the big rail. Well, big it's, it's hard to say you prefer which one you prefer because I I do love all of them really. I mean, even if I'm going through the you know the backside of Wolverhampton, I quite enjoy being on a train. So it, it's always a little bit difficult to judge one over the other. But yeah, I mean, metro systems are fun, aren't they? Really, because they stop more frequently and you see more, more people getting on and off and the graphic design is generally pretty good so I mean I'm interested in all those aspects of things really so I do like metro systems around the world and and being a boring old nerd as we discussed before I have gone on holidays to places and said right to partners or friends right you go and explore the beach or the museum I'm going off to get on the metro system in wherever it was you've been in a TV show yourself recently, which I wasn't yep. until we were yep. chatting beforehand. Mark, which uh, which TV program have you well, been Well, basically, I did a I did a program about typefaces, and here we have two examples. Uh, this is uh, the Gil you, Sands you, you typeface. Brought, you brought props. I love this. Props. Note to anybody else that comes and does one of these with me. Ian March didn't have any props. You've actually brought prop now, A. Is this a sausage dog sign? Is it the totem? Yeah, sign? I call it the totem. Some people call it sausage dog. Yeah, but it was it was in 1948 when they nationalised British Railways, and they had this one unifying logo which they've tried to replicate here on Denton. <laughs> they haven't quite got it right have Well they? you know it's a good effort, good effort, bless them, good effort. I think that's the Friends of Denton Station. Yeah they've done a really good job actually, what, bless what, them. What offends you more, the wrong shape or the wrong typeface? The typeface, because yeah. uh, this was done in Gill Sands which was developed in 1928 by Eric Gill on the back of uh, the Johnston typeface which was designed by Eric, um, Edward Johnston, this is this is all in Johnston, although the zeros are quite odd. Yeah. These, this, there's lovely signs that were used at the end of the standard stock this was the only shape that they did, that kind of odd zero, kind of a continental zero. Where's this from? Where have you stolen this from? This was screwed, this, this there were w- screw holes here. This was screwed in somewhere and you've nicked it. You've, sorry, bought it secondhand at, at, a, an at, auction, a, at yeah. a collector's fair. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Ten points. <laughs> but um, these lovely little fellas uh, used to be on the, on the ends above the vents. Okay. And so, I mean, I've, I've been around the Johnson typeface all my life and I was fascinated by the Johnson typeface. Then I loved the Gil Sands typeface. And then I did a book about the both of them and then Hang that on, turned into TV. If you had to choose, like choosing a favourite son or daughter. If, if you jo- and your John- choices. I know. Gil Sands <laughs> or, or, or Johnson, which, which, which is superior? Come on, if you only one typeface could rule the world. Do you want to think I, about I, that? I probably would go for Gil Sands, actually. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, and I we, probably would. We could make that a vote. 
up in the corner, there's a little, do you prefer Jill Sands? Is it soft G or hard G? Gill, as in Eric. Eric Gill, Gill Sands. Or Johnston, Johnston. based on um, Edward Johnston. I think even I prefer Gill Sands. Yeah, why is that? Well, there is a there is one bit that's better, which we talked about in the program I made as well. Is the one that was really nice. Johnson's solution for the one was really nice with that shaved off edge on it, which Gil Sands doesn't have. So the problem with Gil Sands, which we covered in in the book and the TV show, is that if you put a, a, a capital I and uh, a, um, a lowercase L and a one together in Gil Sands, they look like the same letter. So we didn't quite solve that. But generally, I do like the balance of Gil Sands. What was the name of the show? I haven't seen it. Is it on? It's I- called Two Types. Is it on iPlayer still? It's no longer on iPlayer. The BBC do that thing where it's only valid for 30 days and then. Yeah. Has anybody put up any clips I, on I, be- I believe some naughty person has yeah. put it on a certain tube channel, yeah. A certain yeah. tube, tube <laughs> channel, yeah. yeah. I, but I, that- I feel like I never make enough of the fact that I like the tube and I make videos to YouTube. I yeah. feel like some. There's, there's a, a new dis- logo coming on, isn't there? Oh, no. Some kind of. The YouTube logo in the style of the roundel. What? No, my mm, mind is yeah, blown. Yeah, let's do it. Why haven't I done that before? Come on. Do you design things as well? Are you a yeah, dead hand with an well, illustrator? Yeah, I can have a little go. Tell yeah, us about I, your, I'll do it for you. what sort of things do you design? Well, that was what I got trained in, was graphic design, which is why I'm so interested in all the station signage and everything else. Do you have a degree else. in graphic design? What's, uh, what's diploma, your, I think it's diploma. called. Yeah, is yeah. That, what is that higher than a degree? No. Oh, okay. No, no. Okay. It's, it was it was it was done in those fantastic colleges that existed only for about 10, 15 years. They're not that old. Institutes of higher education that all got abolished and turned into universities. Hang on, are they higher than A levels? Yeah, just a bit higher than A level. But I think, not yeah. as high as a degree. No, not, not a degree. And definitely not as high as a PhD. Oh my goodness, no. Okay. No, right. if only. Then I'd be a doctor, wouldn't I? Could you do a PhD in graphic design? Is that that might be a thing? I'm sure you could. Yeah, I bet there yeah. is. Yeah. And in fact, if you you've spoken to Doctor Maxwell Roberts, and he's got a PhD in all sorts of things, so maybe he'll he'll do transit. He's a, he's a doctor maths. of psychology. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. Max, you do psychology, <laughs> he right? Does. And not graphic design, <laughs> yeah. right? But he could do. He could do maps now because he's a transit maps because he's such an expert. So what things have you made? What have you dabbled with in your spare time? Well, I do all the layout of my books. Yes. So that, those that, I do, do myself. That, do yeah, yeah, I do all the layout myself. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's uh, as a budding author. That's a good way to earn a little bit of extra money is to do the layout of your book as well. Have you made any metro maps? Um, I did design a few mad little fantasy ones when I was a sprog. Yeah, yeah. I did one for Milton Keynes. There's a metro system for Milton Keynes because that was the big city that was growing at the time well, when I was growing that's up. That's a grid. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, well, yeah, but there's no blinking decent public transport, it is there? It would look like a waffle. It yeah. would just be crisscross. Yeah, it would be great, wouldn't straight it? Straight lines. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Or a few diagonals, maybe, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I did that. And also, funnily enough, you asked me why I moved to Manchester. I don't know. It must have always been in my blood, even though I was, I'm a Londoner. I also did a, a, an underground for Liverpool and Manchester when I was 10, 12 years old or whatever. And I sketched it. Do Other still, guys were out playing. Have it? Somewhere, yeah. I'll see if I can scan it for you. Yeah, yeah. Could you, could you, could you not do like a self published book one day? Mark Ovenden's Doodles. <laughs> I don't think it'd be a very big book. Just like, yeah, like, like a, maybe like a pamphlet. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll do, I'll do a pamphlet just for you. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can send me yours as well. I'm sure you've done a few, haven't you? Uh, I used to live in the town of Charleston in South Carolina, America, for a few years. And I, I, I did find the other day the beginnings of an Adobe Photoshop file where I'd started to draw what the, the tram tube system might look like there. But I never well, this, 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 this thing was my, my idea. I was actually helped by the guy that does the tube map, Alan Fold, who's an amazing guy. You should talk to him as well. Um, hang on, hang but, on, hang on. Whoa, stop. Alan who? Alan Fole. He's the guy that um, TFL, draws the tubes map TFL, for TFL. TFL outsource it to, yeah. I'm trying to think of the name of the Pulse company. Creative, to Pulse Creative, yeah. And so he's Alan the guy. Pulse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you saying that if I really want to get to the heart of the man behind yeah. the tube map? He's a man, to, yeah. He's an talk. amazing guy, lovely man. Alan. Yeah. Come on, Alan. Mark, could you ask on my behalf? Alan, will you talk to Jeff? If you lean into the camera a bit, it, it makes it more personal. You know you want to. So Cheers, Alan man. is the actual man. Yeah, yeah. So he helped me with my original idea for this, which was making it look a bit like the London Underground map, okay. but showing all the cities with metro systems on that are going to be in the book. So I did this as a little sketch on a bit of paper or an Adobe Photoshop bad little did file. Did you just kind of go here? And, Alan, and I said, showed it to Alan and he said, I, yeah, I think I can help you out. Yeah. <laughs> I can, I can so he it, started that ball better. rolling and, and, I've, and I've added to it as, as the book's been revised and stuff and new cities have come in, especially in China, there's loads of new systems. Yeah. Um, we've had to add lots of new cities in that side of the world. Not yeah. so many over here, unfortunately. So the original book was out in what year? 2003. And then you revised it in? 2007. And? 2015. So, the, so it's currently two years old. Yeah, What's yeah. coming up new in the, in the world? Might you have to revise it? For a yeah, book, well, I mean, there's, st- there's still new there's still new metro systems being built all over the world, particularly in Asia. Okay. So new ones coming up for sure. Okay. Um, I feel like we're getting to the end. I've got a lot to edit out as it is. Um, what I was going to say, um, 
you, uh, you're also friends with uh, someone that I want to get on to, to chat, Mr. Tim Dunn. Yes, lovely Tim. You did a, uh, a talk, where was that talk at? About, about bad typefaces. Yeah, and also what, also what we had Anne, Anne, Anne Gav as well from uh, Transport for London, who was brilliant as well. And we, we just all enjoyed the fact that even when you've got really strict guidelines as to how to do a sign, still a few little errors creep, the rules creep through. Still get yeah, broken. Yeah. But for example, you, you go to Tower Hill and you see the entrance to the subway there that's clearly in non Johnston. Does it really matter? Is it only us nerds that get irked about that, or, or should, or should, is, are you going to go? No, Jeff, I think it is important, and they should make it the same. <laughs> well, you do ask really good questions, Jeff, and that's why you, you do these things so well, and we love you for it. But I think it is important, yeah, because if you were to allow things to be done in the wrong signage all the time, then there wouldn't be any consistency. You have to have consistency, but it's still fun when people break the rules. So it should be consistent because yeah. that is your branding. That is yeah. what people identify with. When you're in a hurry in your commuter and you, you want that familiarity, you want to see a sign in a certain style, a certain colour, because that aids to your, your, your journey experience. Well, also, it's been very well researched and documented. And you look at people like Margaret Calvert, who, with Jock Kinnear, designed our road signage. They spent hours... What's the name of the typeface for the road signs? Transport. It is called just Transport. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they spent hours researching where you could see the sign and how, when you're approaching at speed and at a slight angle, they spent hours getting those letters right. So if someone goes around and scrib scribbles a sign for car boot sale, it's not going to be as visible. So th the idea of having good graphic designers make the rules is a good idea. What's better to have as a railway sign? Is it, a, is it black on white or white on black? Well, I think the jury's a bit out there, because don't forget that the New York subway started under Massimo Vignelli's ideas with white background and black lettering on. But then um, they swapped to black with, with white lettering. But uh, Jock and uh, Margaret decided to have white backgrounds with black lettering on. So I think the jury's out a little bit on that. Believe it or not, my art teacher at my secondary school, so we're going back 30 years here, there was a wonderful Welshman called Mr. Jeffers who actually ended up working on Morden Gate Line tube station after he retired, sort of part time. And he told me that what he was a fascinating man that just had a thousand anecdotes. And he told me that British Rail had done in the 1940s or 50s experiments by they set up a dummy station with signage with white on black and they and they put on random words and they and they whisked people through at speed Great. and they said to them write down as many words as you can excellent. see excellent and then they reversed the colors excellent with different words I didn't words know about that and run them yeah but i really hope that he wasn't just saying it and it was it yeah. was for real and, and not a wind up and then and then they took their results and, and they concluded that a dark typeface on a white background was more legible at speed mm. than a, a, a light typeface on a dark mm. background wouldn't that be amazing if that were true? Yeah, I would love that to be true. I'd love to I get some pictures of it as well, wouldn't you? I want you? that to be true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mark, I'm going to have to say something terrible here because uh, we're sort of running out of time. Because <laughs> we've, we've spoken for so long and I am going to be quite fastidious and keep this to half an hour. Good. The idea is, as always, that you don't have to watch this as a video. You can sort of put this on in the background and sort of listen to it as an audio podcast. Especially now, if you, if you subscribe to YouTube Premium, free for the first three months I'm not you can have nothing like this but, I've, but you get not, it's non-advert YouTube it costs like 11 99 a month but you can now watch a video on your phone and then flip over to another app and oh, the audio in the background keeps on carries playing. on that's good that's great yeah. so um, leave us a note in the comments did you watch this or did you listen to this what, what if you had to put up with mine and Mark's ugly faces and did you miss the props if you only listened to it <laughs> yeah, yeah do you know what we're not talking about I'm if you're listening to this I'm currently holding up my bottle of water Mark, you, you say something while I take a swig well you will have missed these lovely things here and I think this is this is definitely my favourite um, example of good graphic design it was done in uh, 1948 for the nationalisation of the railways it was all in Gill Sands and you know this kind of to me, feels so kind of 40s, 50s, 60s British Feels railways. right, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. What we need to do, Mark, is that you need to hold like one end, I need to hold the other yeah. at an angle, yeah. and then this is our thumbnail. So if you, if you just hold still for five seconds. <laughs> that, <laughs> and that's your thumbnail. Um, hopefully you've got the Denton sign in the background, the British Railway sign there. I genuinely, I'm not just saying this, I do think we could talk for several hours. Let's just go down the pub one day and uh, do you drink? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and Stalybridge Station, where this well, once famously a well, some, train goes well, to, some, has a lovely buffet. Well, at some point, I, I didn't do it this morning, I was, I was, I was running. Uh, at some point, I will come back to Manchester again and do the there and back. We'll do it together Saturday and we'll end up in Stalybridge Station. We'll end up in buffet. Stalybridge Station and then, and then we'll go for a drink Brilliant. next time. It's Mark, a deal. For your, oh, for good, like we're going to pump it out. Yeah. This, this. 
I'm going to shake your hand. Thank you so much oh, for your time. Jeff. Everybody, uh, Mark, quickly tell people where your website is and your Twitter and everything like that. It's markovenden.com and the it's Twitter on, is at markovenden. It's all on, if you go like this, it's all on screen now. <laughs> and people get, there's links in the description to your books. Buy, buy all these books, but Transit Map to the World is just the best. Uh, anything else you want to plug really quickly? Um, anything else I'm doing in the future will be on the website. Bye.